agenda. I'll put the link in chat here. If someone doesn't have it. Hey, any uh, anything that people want to add uh, to the uh, agenda to cover everything? Bruce, I think you had a question uh, that uh, well, we'll, we'll cover we'll, in the base. Yeah, we'll cover transition. it. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, there's your name in the attendance section. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, there was one thing I was just thinking about in terms of. When we get changes, as soon as as soon as people are going to want to make changes at the site, how do we want to do reviews? Um, I, I think we probably need to work out a process in terms of just how we want to go. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but just who should be doing reviews and other any sort of issues that we need to, or any process we need to apply to reviews. And who to review? Okay, I added that as an item. All right, let's uh, go ahead and jump in. So there's no updates on the charter uh, update and placement. Uh, haven't had a chance to do that. I was finishing up the video stuff, uh, which I just finished last night. Um, beta site, Brian, go ahead and take it away. Okay, um, yeah, so we're finally live. <clears throat> that happened yeah. this week. So you'll notice that the site now looks a little bit different and we are fully onto the MK docs. Um, there's a couple of things I've got to tidy up. Um, I've done the changes, but I haven't actually pushed them to the site yet. Uh, I think there's a couple of links that got broken where things were pointing to the old site they now need to point to the new site. Um, but yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Um, I noticed as I joined, Bruce, you made the comment. So yes, that's one of the things I've got to change. When I put the beta site up, there wasn't the versions for OKD. There was just the one version. So I we decided we wanted to get rid of that menu because there's no point in looking at all the OKD 3 dot and 2 dot and 1 dot versions um, when there's just the latest. But now that Michael's put the versions in that I can go back and point to the previous site. And um, in the short term, if you want to get it, if you just go and click the on the bread trail, the left handmost link, you, it takes you to that, that that page. So if you want to get to it immediately, that's where you get to it. Um, but hopefully by tomorrow, I should have pushed the updates and we're going to have that landing page back. Yeah, you know, I, I think that we um, we didn't say that we wanted to get rid of all the versions, just the three-point versions. Because yeah, but... it's still, it, it still is useful to have, like we do have people out there that are running even 4.5 because I keep seeing problems yeah, but... updating 4.5. So we, we, need, we sort of need the 4.5 docs, the 4.6 docs, 4.7 docs. Yeah, but when we had the beta, they weren't available. We just had one version of OKD, version 4, which said um, latest. No, there, there, was a, there was a point in time uh, perhaps briefly, when all of those versions were available, um, and uh, the, at one point the latest disappeared, and, and at a different point the latest point to 4.8. I don't think we ever saw 4.9 as a version, but there was a point where I think 4.6 and up yeah. were selectable. But, but that's fairly recent behavior because correct. While we just had so yeah, when the beta was published. There was so, only the one four version, which was right. Latest. So, that, so that was probably a a race condition between the old site and and the beta site, and that so was as the I said, that I... made it to the old site that never made it into the beta site. But anyway, we can talk about what we want there, because uh, I think I, I'm not I sure if it may we... help, but uh, from the experience we got with Overt, we are maintaining only the supported version documentation. So it depends on which version of OKD are still under support by the community? And I think uh, well, that's nothing, a question we haven't support really answered yet. So. Well, I'm, but there's, there's a point where, where I think the community can say, okay, we don't have enough institutional knowledge or effort to, 
to to officially say in any way that that anyone should ask us questions on this because you know what I mean like <laughs> I don't know it just seems like it's it's asking for and it's also it allows it, it sort of gives the impression to people that they can stay on the version that they're at if they see it in the pull down and if they see that it's it's if they if they feel that if it's in the pull down well then it's something that's supported in some I fashion. mean yeah that's a very interesting yeah, just just a moment. So um, um, just so I'm clear, and I think anyone who's watching this video is clearing, I just shared the screen with the docs.okd.io, and those are all the ones that are available in the docs there. So um, those are the ones that I suspect we should be point being able to list on the the MK docs version of okd.io, or, or are you shortening that list up? I'm pointing to the page you landed on. Yeah. I'm just going to go to that landing page. But I mean, it, it is a very interesting question is what is a supported version of OKD? Because I know OCP have just changed their long term support to be so, every EU version from 4.8. But um, at, at the minute, 4.6 long term support is supported. But on OCP, it's only 4.7, 4.8, and 4.9 now that are currently supported. Everything else is out of support. So we're still like, listing 3.x version in the docs. Yeah, but if you're supporting it yourself, would the docs for your version not be useful? Yeah. Well, but I think it gives the impression that that someone is maintaining those docs and someone is maintaining the resources. There's links within those docs that go to like playbooks, Ansible playbooks, and things like that. And so oh, sure, it's kind of I'm... unclear, you know. Right, but... Oh, do we have a guest? Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Hello. Yeah, that'll well, resolve in, in a second, yeah. whoever it is. On the OCP docs, though, uh, you can select the version you want, right? Correct. And, right. Uh, you can do, you can do with, that from with docs. Our, with the docs that came up when I clicked on the docs on the new site, um, you only got one version and you couldn't select yeah, other but versions. That, as I said, that's a point in time thing. That will be gone by tomorrow. We will. If you point, if you go to the left thing on the breadcrumb, that's the page I'll land at, which is the page that Diane showed, which is has the drop down on. So that's going to become the new landing page for Docs. So, I, so again, I do think the bigger question is, what are we going to say that we support in terms of the community? Because ultimately, that does mean maintaining the linked resources. In those docs. I'm, going, I'm just going to just clarify this because every time we say support, someone at Red Hat probably loses <laughs> their wings or something. Um, <laughs> an angel loses their wings or uh, an SA dies. I don't know what, but um, probably cries. It, there, there is no support for OKD. What I think is, is what is our commitment to keeping these documents available for people to go back in time and, and ha have access to them. So, and I, I thought what I heard at a previous docs meeting was that we were going to stick in tandem with the OCP docs team. So whatever they had in um, docs.openshift.io, we would s stay in tandem with that because we're relying on the docs team to generate those. Um, and so as, as OCP and OpenShift drops um, documentation, we would drop them off our list is what I thought I heard in the past. That's but, what I, th I thought we had decided, but I think yeah. maybe there was a little bit of, uh, uh, we had a, uh, a situation where maybe there was a miscommunication or something. I, here's, here's the issue in a nutshell is that we, within those pages are links to resources and descriptions of things that even in terms of Kubernetes, may not be accurate anymore, right? In terms of processes, may not be considered best processes, best practices, right? And do we want to keep that around and create extra work for the Red Hat employees who have to maintain that? Um, I, I think that might be a question for Michael Burke, who is the, the point person for the docs. Yeah. My, my understanding is is that like, say we have a 3.6 set of docs sitting out there. I think that was the last one on the list. I'm not positive. Um, and something goes out of date. An Ansible playbook is no longer available. 
you know, it's removed from wherever it is in GitHub that it was linked to. That That's not anything that we're going to redirect to a newer Ansible playbook or that Michael is going to, that link will just be broken. Um, and so I, and I, that's kind of how it works with other things as things go out of date and go stale, links go stale too. I haven't checked that if that happens with OCP, but I would defer to Michael Burke personally if they do that kind of upkeep on the older um, documentation sets for OpenShift. I don't think they do. I think if that playbook goes dead uh, as it becomes a dead link, it's a dead link in the OpenShift docs too. Because keeping those things up to date would be a very big job. I think that we should do a bit of distinction here because whatever will be declared as supported by Red Hat, it's not meaning that it will be supported, well, maintained by the OKD maintainer. So uh, even the documentation, I, I think that if within the OKD community, we are going to fix packs that are reported against 4.7 or 4.6, it's fine keeping documentation back to 4.6. But if within the OKD community, we receive a bug and we are not going to touch it because it's on something that nobody is going to work on, there's no real meaning in keeping documentation for such versions. Yeah, so I just put I'll just put up, there's the OCP drop-down, and there's the OKD drop-down. Yeah, and I, I would bet if you go to, and anecdotally, I, I would bet if you went to the 3.0 container platform, there would be a bunch of broken links, things that no longer existed that it linked out well, to. Well, they also have their wonderful red text overlaid over everything yeah. <laughs> that lets you know that. You know, yeah. So this is actually saying that this is no longer supported. So maybe what we need to do is make a decision about which one is no longer going to be community supported, and do some red overlay like that on that. And and I'm fine with it. But I maintaining well, the, the the links is going to be a big deal. Let's let's table this and have folks think about it until Michael uh, shows up uh, at our next meeting. Um, there's six of us on the call, and then there's Michael, and then we can also ask the larger group what they think. Um, because in a way, it, in my mind, I think it does also impact people's perception of when they come into the channels asking questions and things associated with the release and thing, uh, things that release are associated with or that are associated with an OKD community uh, in terms of chat, in terms of... Um, you know, uh, uh, us providing um, these uh, guides and things like that. Like we generally are only gonna provide guides and focus our efforts on promoting things in the community that are supported, that are versions that are in sync with OCP. That's my sense, but who knows? You know, and Vadim might have some input on this as well. All right, so let's table this just because it's it's probably a larger um, discussion. Uh, Brian, what was? Are there any other lingering issues? Um, I don't think so. Um, there are some bits I've got to do. I've got to finish off the section on um, creating or updating content. Um, I'm working on putting a section for using sort of container images rather than having to install stuff locally. Um, I've also sort of playing around with the community um, core ready workspaces, the CHE and the CHE, um, creating a dev file so you can actually do, um, edit it within that environment. Um, so again, you don't have to install anything locally, not even Docker or Podman. You can just run it on your container, on your cluster, your OKD cluster. Um, I want to put a little bit about inclusive language in there, and I think I've got an issue open against that. And as I say, I've just got to fix the landing page for the documentation now that we've got that drop down back um, with multiple versions in. That's it. There's no technical issues or there's no challenges that we've got to really overcome. Um, 
and, and we're sort of into business as usual now, so if people want to tweak the look and feel, or if they've got um, suggestions for better layout or better wording, it's we're business as usual on the new site now. And then your next item is about uh, uh, basically for review of suggested things, who and, and what and where and, and what not. Yeah, it, it's really because obviously I'm a committer on this um, and not everybody is. So it's, it's really when somebody makes a pull request, is there a process that we as a group want to do to evaluate and, and agree and approve changes or I mean, I'm sort of doing it myself at the minute and just reviewing it and, and making a call. But I'm just thinking, as we are the documentation group, should we be more proactive within this forum to actually review we, and push changes could we, forward? Can we say something like um, that, that in this docs meeting, we will review it um, each time we meet the pull requests that come through regarding the site? And, and keep it as simple as that. I mean, in the past, I just willy-nilly did them as as I saw fit or as people gave me stuff and was just grateful. Um, but I think if we use the same process, Jamie, that you use um, in the main meeting of looking at the pull request issues and that that are related to the docs um, in this meeting, um, and then you know do the you know merge the pull request if it passes the muster here, um, as long as we have you know, I, I don't want to say quorum or anything like that as consensus, I guess is the word, that it's, it's okay and maybe that we have had Brian do a technical review of them, of it, and just tell us, just use this meeting. Yep, and that, that works. Is that, is that what the rest of the group uh, is thinking? I see heads nodding. Preeti, did you have anything you wanted to chip in on that? No, I think I agree with it. Uh, we could review the pull request, and I'll be more proactive uh, with uh, reviewing the pull request. Excellent. And all right, next thing up is uh, the name and scope of the install and README now that the site change has happened. Um, that's something that work can begin. I'll begin on that, and I'll run it by the group uh, as time goes on. Um, inclusive language update basically done, and Brian said you're, you're gonna have a little blurb on the, on the new site about that. Um, work will commence now on the, the build doc outline um, uh, that we can submit to, to have Vadim sort of fill in the blanks or at least look over. The idea is to have something for uh, building uh, 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 OKD and, and people knowing um, sort of where all of the pieces lay. Uh, Vadim's obviously kind of busy right now, but um, I think if Brian and I work on something, um, now that the site stuff is out of the way, maybe we'll have more time. Uh, code of conduct? Oh, yeah, so, go ahead. Just on that one, Jamie, I, I think it's worth also just going back to the discussion we had at the last full meeting around Code ready containers, the the snow, the single node install. Um, it sounds like there is something to do there. People are quite interested in a single node install versus CRC. So I, I think we need to include that within this topic as well. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a good one. And um, Jamie, I apologize. I don't think we did we reach out to the folks to schedule a time to see to find a time. For them to do that, um, CRC Snow Special Sig. No, no, we we did not yet. Um, I'm, my sense is that uh, now that the website stuff is done, the floodgates going to open on all of the other things. So uh, there was a lot of emphasis on that and um, some of the other projects going on for me. The the video stuff. Um, we will set up a time for that and once that group is solidified and has met. I think it's it's a great way to create documentation as you go. So as they discuss things, say, okay, this needs to be in the documentation. This needs to be in the documentation, et cetera. And in terms of um, the code-ready containers, 
uh, Charo had his document on his blog is a great starting point. Uh, and then building on that, I think, is something that we can. Yes. I just wanted to see if we could um, let's let's try uh, after this meeting to touch base with it was Daniel and Neil, um, Neil Gampa and Daniel Axelrod. Um, I did reach out to Steve Spiker and a couple of other the folks on his team, the PM for Code Ready Containers in there. He gave me the name of two folks to um, include in that SIG too. So uh, hopefully that'll move it forward. Uh, let's see, code of conduct. Um, that would be Michael for the search and replace. Uh, he's not on the call, so we will uh, come back around to that. Um, so there was, so we've sort of been lobbing back and forth this idea of setting up our own Twitter um, or not. If we set up our own Twitter, someone has to man it, right? Someone has to do that work. Do we think we have enough people? Because I, I don't have the time to do all of it myself. Like there would need to be two people basically to be able to do that. Do we have the resources or the volunteers for a second person to do Twitter duty for us to launch our own Twitter? I could do that. I could help with that. Okay. All right. Retreat. Well, then that's that would be great. So uh, I think maybe what we could do <laughs> to start is um, look and see what Twitter handles are available to us that are okay. that we could use. If you could spend a little, a few cycles on that um, and see if we can reserve one of them, um, that will be a good start. Though, and again, where I think we last left it was as we have and as we need to, I can retweet anything out with like an OKD hashtag out of OpenShift Commons. So if people have things or blogs or things that they're doing, we can start doing that and that's easy enough. Uh, and um, Dietrich, are, are you a Red Hatter? Sorry, I, I can't. I never yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm with Red Hat. I work yeah. for the CFE team. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I thought so. I, I think I that we wouldn't recommend to retweet everything with hashtag OKD because there are weird stuff with OKD hashtag on Twitter, and I wouldn't yeah. really like. Oh no, to see I, them. I know. Yeah, and so it takes a little bit of vetting. So maybe Dietri, if you wanna um, do that and just set up a Google chat inside, um, and you can include Jamie as well in that, and then. Um, if if there is something that you need me to retweet, okay, to OpenShift or OpenShift Commons, that should be you can just feed it to me there. Okay. Someone okay. Can feed it. Um, okay. And, or do it to me in Slack, whatever, wherever you want to do it. But find me, um, and I I'll wake up whatever time it is, theoretically, and and retweet okay. it. But I think that that the per that. The person who reserves the OKD, whatever the Twitter handle is, should be a, should be with a Red Hat um, email address. So I think that's the one thing that legal would like us to do, so that it's owned by because it's a branding thing. Okay, yeah. thanks for letting me know. So I'll come first. Let me come up with the available handles to you, and then we can move ahead from that. Yeah. I, I would recommend to get uh, open source program office involved because we, we have a Bitwarden account that we can use to store password for those kinds of account within Reddit. Yep. They that is mandatory for everything. I I, st I have the Bitwarden stuff is across all of Red Hat. So once we, we find it, it'll get put in there and then if any of us gets hit by a bus, um they can still tweet. Let's be an optimist and we'll say we win the lottery. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's, okay, I've added that to the task list. Uh, and then actually you're with the next thing, survey. Where are we at with uh, survey? I just came back from P2. I haven't started on it, but uh, I do have a couple of questions in that. Um, so the, I created a list of questions in the user survey uh, discussion. Let me paste it over here so that everyone has it. Um, yeah. So I can see, um, so this is the discussion. And I can see there are uh, there are some comments by Sandro and Adam. So um, 
do i finalize uh, do i include their uh, questions in the final question list or that's for you i think to take a look at and see okay. if it fits in the to what you know what i mean okay. folks can look at the discussion and give you feedback i think but i'd like to let you roll with this and and make some some editorial decisions cool sounds good so let me come up with a final list by tomorrow the first draft and then i'll share it with you guys and then we can take it there. We, perfect yeah we, and we can use openshift commons would be a good once you have the twitter or uh, once you have it done we can tweet it out i would also post it on a couple of places under linkedin and on the mailing list and in the kube you know the kubernetes things but i think we can get a good round of feedback on this very very well done but uh there's one more question jimmy do you want me to look at some of the existing questions that red hat ocp uh, related openshift previous survey questions or yes okay. i think so what does the group think yeah yep excellent this is yeah. great thank you for running with us yeah. we've needed yeah, that's, it that's, for that's a long great. time now I, I guess in that i i it's been a while since i saw the list of questions but uh, are we asking what version you're running in all of that? Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm not asking that. Uh, do you think that we should ask that? Well, I think, I think, I think so. one of the, I think that it is a difficulty since we don't have telemetry that we don't have a good handle on what people are running, okay. unlike OCP. Okay. For letting me know that, yeah, I'm going to write that question down. And I, and I think that goes back to our, our early discussion in terms of documentation. Right. If, if we find there's a large user base that are still at sort of 4.4, 4.5, then that that gives us an incentive to actually keep the the previous versions of documentation around and stuff. Right, and I guess that should be a multiple selection uh, list because people could be running more than one. Yeah, I, I would be also interested in just in the number of people using OKD, which is kind yeah. of an unknown. Okay. I would say folks should should put it in the if you can put it in the in the ticket, then that way um, she doesn't have to put it in all these notes right now, and people can clearly say what they think should be in there and whatnot. So please update the ticket with these thoughts that you've been throwing down, and then that creates a record moving forward of how we came up with with this. Yeah, yeah, that would help. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, let's see, next up is just reviewing the task list. Uh, let's see, oh, do we have any new business? Any last minute walk up items that folks have? Or are we good? Yeah, I've just, I've just got a question. What's mm -hmm. happening with the time of this meeting? Because Europe went back an hour, so this is an hour earlier for me. And I've just looked at the Fedora calendar, <laughs> and time doesn't change, which suggests when you guys go back week after next, well, you're going to I think it's a, hour as well. I think it's scheduled on UTC. It is. Uh, so it stays the same in UTC, like... Uh, North America so is, about, is about to go off daylight savings or whatever we're on, so it's going to move to yes. 9 o'clock so, so that's what I'm asking. momentarily. When Americas go back an hour, is this call going to go back an hour? Or are we going to be well, out of sync with the, talent, the public calendar? Of course, of course, that's a Diane question. <laughs> I believe we're sticking with whatever UTC is in the Fedora calendar. And so I just adjust based on whatever the Fedora calendar says to me. Um, I don't know if ever, we, and we have this conversation every year, um, but I'm pretty sure we just stick with we the We can write the it out to, so that in the future we know. So I think it makes best to stick with UTC, right? It means I'm yeah. going to have to come an hour earlier, is that it? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, what, that's what I'm asking, because yeah. everyone's used yeah. to turning up at this time. Yeah. This yeah. calls an hour earlier for me today. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, is it okay for people, because I mean, it, I think it's actually best for me. <laughs> right, earlier yeah. for you is better, right? I think it's better for, well, it's better I, for I the actually, European. Right, like I have it in my calendar in UTC time zone, so it automatically shifts. Yeah, that's okay. my daylight I'm, savings shifts. 
Yeah. I'm just checking because everything else with my work moves forward and back on daylight savings. So it's the same time slot right. each yeah. week, apart from these two weeks when Europe and, and America are, are, are out of sync. But yeah. this one looks like it's, it's continuing. So we're going to stay on UTC. So and, I'm going to stay in this time zone. Yeah. Okay. And I will do what I always do when the switch is over, because I will stay on the air afterwards for everybody who forgot. And that happened every year. I, I show up and they're like, oh, yeah, but yeah. So, so again, it might, might be worth just putting a reminder out when you put your, your, your message in the channel, Jamie, that yeah. for, for the North American folks, it's coming an hour earlier, in yeah. week after next. So, Jamie, can you share the task list? Is there, show us? Yep. Yep. Share so show uh, the let, me, let me share my screen really quick here. What Diane didn't do. Uh, okay, so the task list we have uh, manipulate manipulate the charter, which is me. Write up code on site automation, Brian. Uh, that's still a work in progress. Uh, code of conduct edits, Michael. Gather legal input on external repo social media, Diane. Um, just so that we know where we're standing with that stuff. Um, yeah. Connect with OpenShift Twitter leads to push out OKD contact, Diane. Get beta site running on GitLab. Uh, check DNS routing options, right? Bruce, you were going to do some experimentation. Uh, and yeah, then... and I, I was actually, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that uh, it should be possible at least to do the uh, uh, make docs on GitLab using the GitLab runner. And okay. uh, so... Uh, I haven't actually tried it yet. Uh, I did look at a number of other people who have done similar things. And uh, so I, I guess my, when, I, when I do get that up and attempted to running, then it'll be a question of whether or not the uh, add-ons all pull in. Right. Well, let's leave uh, that on there. I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not there yet, so. Okay, we'll leave that on there. And then, of course, look for our Twitter handle options. Is there anything else I've missed? Um, I think that has been discussed something like four weeks ago or something like that uh, about moving the OKD website on GitHub under an OKD organization. Is it something that we dropped? It? No, it's it's still there, but we're going to decide if we're going to GitLab uh, uh -huh. first to build the site as opposed to, to GitHub. And then once we decide where we're going to land, then we'll deal with like, okay, moving. Uh, to okay. respect. So we're going to. This is this is the first stage of that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're good to go. Uh, and Diane, any events that we should be uh, knowledgeable about coming up? Uh, where we uh, might be? Well, there's always events. Like, trust me. Um, there is on December second. If you're in Japan, um, we're doing an all Japanese OpenShift Commons gathering. Um, so stay tuned for that. The next big event for us is DevConf CZ. In, um, in just outside of Prague and Bruno. Anyone who has permission to travel is in, and wants to, that would be a, a huge thing. It always snows, though. Just remember it's not springtime in, Czech, in the Czech Republic. Um, and then there's going to be a number of um, other things coming up in the spring, in the first three months of the year. Then we'll get a schedule together and see. But the next big thing would be um, KubeCon EU in May. Think. All righty. So nothing uh, too much. Uh, for folks that didn't notice, there is a uh, uh, just before uh, KubeCon uh, Americas, there was a uh, release of GitOps principles from a new GitOps working group with the CNCF, which is some pretty cool stuff. And Christian Hernandez from Red Hat is on that group and stuff like that. And I'm sort of tangentially following what they're doing. I might get involved with them as well. But that's kind of a cool thing because they're they're talking about a lot of automation stuff with clusters and GitOps um, practices and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Uh, all right. Let's call it a day. And um, if anything comes up, be sure to communicate with each other over the email list or in the, in the chat channels. OK. So, Dietri, I just pinged you in Gchat. So um, you should see something, an invite from me, and we'll add Jamie into that um, once you hear there. 
So anyways, thanks everybody. Um, take care. Have a great day.